and welcome to my channel, Kitchen Notes from Nancy. If you're new here, I'd like to encourage you to join our neighborhood by hitting the subscriber button below. And if you are a returning visitor, I'd like to greet you with the customary, hey neighbor. Okay, so tonight I'm going to be sharing with you something that has been pretty requested on my, on my channel. And that is my meatloaf recipe. So if you're interested in learning how to make a juicy and succulent meatloaf that will not disappoint, stay tuned and we're gonna hop right into it. To begin this recipe, I started by melting um, about three tablespoons of butter in a pan. And then I am going to saute my onions and bell peppers. I went ahead and cut them up first and I'm going to saute them until they're soft. If you omit this step or if you don't do this step, the bell peppers and onions can be rather crunchy in your meatloaf. Um, I like to have all my flavors mesh together, so I definitely never, ever skip this step. Um, also, you can make this meatloaf with turkey if you want. You can use the same recipe with turkey. This is an all-beef meatloaf, but it'll be, uh, it'll be fabulous all the same. So once our veggies are done, we're going to start preparing the meat. And this is two pounds of ground beef. And I'm starting with um, some garlic powder, onion powder, um, a little bit of Italian seasonings, um, black pepper, some cayenne pepper, a little bit of seasoning salt, And then a little bit of parsley. I like to add some Worcestershire sauce. Y'all know I struggle with that word. So um, I like to add some of that to my meatloaf. It just helps to create a slightly bolder flavor. Um, in the meatloaf. So once all the seasonings are in, I start with just a little sprinkle of flour. This is just a little bit of all-purpose flour. And then I'm going to follow that up with about a half a cup of breadcrumbs. And you can use plain breadcrumbs. You can use the Italian breadcrumbs. I use plain breadcrumbs because that's what I had on hand. Um, but you can use whichever kind you like. Some people um, take sliced like bread and toast it a little bit and crumble it up. You can do that. Some people use crackers um, that they break up. You can do that. My choice is just the breadcrumbs. To me, they're a little bit easier um, to deal with. And then the um, flour just kind of helps to act as a binder for my meatloaf as well. And now I'm going to add a small can of tomato sauce. This is like um, maybe six ounces or so. It's that little can that you get at Aldi. And I like to add that to my meatloaf. And then we are going to take those vegetables that we sauteed at the very, very beginning of the meatloaf. And we are going to add those here now. So now I've sat the actual meatloaf mixture to the side for a minute and I'm going to break one egg into this bowl 
And then I'm going to, y'all excuse Legend down here. He <laughs> was waiting on me to drop things and he just did not want to be on his own tonight. So just ignore him over in the corner. Um, usually he lays on the floor, um, while I'm cooking sometimes. So, but the camera picked him up in this shot. So just excuse him. Um, I am going to lightly beat this egg and then to this egg, I am going to add some milk. Um, I added about a half a cup of milk and then I'm going to lightly beat, um, the egg and milk mixture together. And y'all, my goal for the new year is to work on giving you better measurements. Um, the way I cook in my kitchen, I rarely measure ever, anything, but I'm going to work on getting you guys some actual measurements, um, for upcoming videos in the new year. So now you take and add the, uh, milk mixture, milk and egg mixture to the meatloaf. And if you notice, up until this point, I have not manipulated this meatloaf at all. And the reason is because if you manipulate your meatloaf too much, it will get tough. And you want a tender, juicy meatloaf. You don't want that meatloaf to get tough. So now that I have everything added in, I'm about to start the process of mixing everything up. And so here I'm just going to put on some gloves and y'all will see me and these gloves had a time because these aren't the ones that fit your hand. These are kind of like those food service gloves. <laughs> and so as I manipulated the meatloaf, it was just like the gloves kept wanting to slide off and it was just frustrating. That's why I prefer the ones that fit to my hand when I um, have to do something like this. But these are just some that I had in the pantry. So I had grabbed them and was like, oh, okay, I'll use these tonight. Ugh, they, it was, I had a time, y'all. I had a time. And you'll see me uh, eventually just switch over to a spoon because it was so, so frustrating. Um, but you can just get your meatloaf mixed all up here. Um... And then, see, this is me fighting with those gloves. I'm fighting with those gloves, working with this meatloaf. And I probably should have used a slightly bigger bowl um, to do this because my bowl got kind of full. And then, you know, with these gloves. But I love y'all. I love y'all. So, you asked for it. And so, I was like, look, my people are asking. I have to deliver. I'm already weeks behind in delivering. But I got to get this out before Christmas so they can use it if they want to. So the thing about meatloaf is you're typically playing in a guessing game because you can't taste it. Um, so I am about to show you how to get around that. You know, this is raw. You can't taste it, but you don't want to cook a meatloaf. And then once that meatloaf is cooked, it has no flavor. So I'm going to show you in the next clip how I rectify this. So in that same pan that you cook the vegetables in, you're just going to take a little bit of your mixture once it's mixed up and you're going to fry a piece like a little patty. And then you're going to taste it once it's done. And this is how I make sure that my meatloaf is perfect. So once I tasted my little piece, I felt that my meatloaf was where I wanted it to be. All of the flavors were there. And now I'm going to take it and just mold it into the shape of a loaf. If you have a meatloaf pan, you can use that. But this meatloaf was rather large. So I'm just using an aluminum pan and I am forming it into the shape that I want. Um, and it will hold its shape. It won't, you know, because you have those binders in there. You have those breadcrumbs, you have the eggs, you have all those things. So it will basically hold this shape while it's cooking. And once I get it formed up here, I am going to slide this bad boy in the oven.
So while my meatloaf is in the oven, I'm going to work on the sauce that I'm going to put on top. So I start with some tomato sauce. And this is about three ounces or so. And then to the tomato sauce, I add some ketchup. So it's about two to three tablespoons of ketchup that I add. I was struggling here with my ketchup. Um, I think I was down to the uh, bottom of that particular bottle. Um, now I am going to add some barbecue sauce. And typically in my house, we use honey barbecue sauce. So that's what that is. It, it's the barbecue sauce. It has a little bit of honey in it. Um, and then I'm using some Worcestershire sauce um, also in this topping. And I'm going to give it a little bit of a mix here. Get that mixed all good. And I'm giving it a little bitty taste. Now, I am going to add a little bit of sweetness. There was some honey in the barbecue sauce that I used. But now I'm adding in a little bit of light brown sugar to give it. Just a little bit of sweetness. I know some people use just straight ketchup on top of their meatloaf. But I like to do a little bit of extra um, to my sauce. And then once I start eating the meatloaf, a lot of times I will add some extra ketchup. But I like to make sure the sauce that's on top is extra, extra flavorful. So you're just going to give that a really, really good mix here. And then once it's mixed up to how we want it, you're just going to sit it to the side. So once the meatloaf is pretty much done, this meatloaf cooked for an hour and 15 minutes um, at 350 degrees. You take it out of the oven and then I drained all of that grease that was on it. So you see me kind of recentering it in the pan because you have to drain that grease off. If you don't, you're going to have a greasy mess. And then take that sauce that we worked on and I just spoon it over and I give it a really, really good covering. And at this point, the meatloaf is already done on the inside. Now, you're adding the sauce to it and then you're going to put it back in the oven for just a minute so that that sauce can get um, nice and glazy on top of it. But you want to make sure that the meatloaf is done. Um, I don't like to put my sauce on first. Uh, because the sauce will get kind, the sauce will get kind of burnt um, before the meatloaf can cook, and so that's why I do this step after, and then I just slide it back in the oven for about 10, 15 more minutes. Let that sauce get nice and glazed on it, and then what we end up with is something that is absolutely beautiful. So I am going to go ahead and slice in to the meatloaf here. Um, and I'm going to take out a piece so that you can see it. Y'all, this meatloaf was amazing. Now, I know that some people, like my family, for Christmas or Thanksgiving, we tend to do a traditional dinner. Um, but for Christmas, we like to mix it up a little bit. Sometimes we'll do seafood. Sometimes we'll do other non-traditional di dishes. So this meatloaf would be perfect for Christmas if your family wants to do something other than the traditional turkey, ham, etc. Um, this was a weeknight meal for us. And like I said, it was awesome. At the end, you'll see a picture of what I served it with. I just served it with mashed potatoes and some mixed vegetables. Look at that. Y'all, look at that. It is juicy. It's tender. You see those bell peppers. You see those onions. That glaze is sitting on there perfectly. Um, as always, thank y'all so much for joining me. Y'all have no idea how um, much y'all mean to me. I'm sorry that it took so long to get this video out to you guys. Um, but as always, 
Thank you so much for watching. If you're not already subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button below. And if you are subscribed, make sure that your notifications are on so that you're notified every time I post another video. Um, we will be going on Christmas break soon, so the videos will be... I will be knocking the videos out constantly, so you want to be notified, y'all, so you can get some of this goodness on your table. As always, I love you, I love you, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, neighbors.